Let's finish off our observing of the sky, chapter one. Remember, we don't really know why things are happening, although I've hinted, but our ancestors didn't know. All they could do is draw pictures, observe, observe. And uh, so some things freaked them out, like streaks in the sky. They didn't know. I mean, bad stuff happens and what's going on out there. It's pretty magical and pretty mysterious, right? So they wondered. And then uh, something else that tended to bother them besides streaks was uh, eclipses. And it was a strange thing. And figuring out the pattern of eclipses, you know, you could say roughly you get two of each type a year, but it's, it's a little tricky. You really have to look closely and keep track. Let's just say as an introduction, what goes on. And then again, we'll come back to this in chapter four and say, why is it? that we see what we see. This is seen from Earth. This view would be seen from space by aliens or spacecraft looking and seeing Earth, Moon, Sun. But we just stand out here, right? Now you can tell Earth is curved. I'll get into that in chapter five. And people have known that for a long time because it's really rather obvious. In the book, uh, page 105, you've got notes on this. And so real quickly, you know, solar eclipse, sun goes away. It's really, um, sun is blocked by a moon, so we'll talk about that. We see this during the day. Well, if sun's out, it's got to be during the day, so then it gets blocked. Sun is 400 times wider, but 400 times farther than moon. That's something to remember. We're going to build on that. That's cheating. People didn't know that. What is the moon phase? Now, moon goes away on a lunar eclipse. What does it mean go away? Well, really, it turns orange. The sunlight is blocked by Earth. That is, moon is in Earth's shadow. Again, we're cheating a little bit, but I'm just giving you a taste of what's going on. You see that at night. What moon phase would that be? Let's take a look here and see what we can see. So I'm going to hit the lights, and we're going to take a look. Sun is the big light bulb in the sky. There it is. Illuminating Earth and Moon. So anything, including my hand, the side facing Sun is lit, the other side is dark, and it casts a shadow. If it spins, then different sides get the light, but still it's whatever side is facing Sun is lit, whatever it is. If it spins, then you get different sides. So we'll talk about that. Now we're on Earth. So right now we're playing aliens. All right, we're doing alien stuff now. We're looking from spacecraft or aliens, and we're cheating a little bit. Again, we'll come back to this in chapter four. So I'll give you this little taste of bridge. I know you might be asking, why, why, why does this happen? And that was hard for thousands of years. People didn't know, so they made up stories, trying to make sense of it, but they could see stuff. And watch this. You see out there in your spaceship a lit moon. See, for you, you would say, look, it's all lit. But remember, people on Earth, that's where people are, as far as we know, that's all we've got. And when we look up, notice that I would be seeing this side, the not lit side. What phase is that? Yeah, that's a new moon. So you're an alien. That's seen from space. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. She's seeing it from Earth. And what she would see is the not lit side, right? The, this part, not lit. We've kind of gone over that now. Notice also that Earth, we know Earth spins. We're leaving moon spin for the end of chapter four. But as we spin, we spin into the, oh look, sun is rising. Ah, it doesn't feel like we're spinning, right? That's a big thing. In chapter one, it doesn't feel like we're moving. And sun's gonna be higher. Uh, noon time-ish. And sun's gonna set. Okay. Daytime, nighttime. Daytime, nighttime, spin into the light, out of the light. We'll work on that later. Now, oftentimes in this new moon that we're seeing from Earth, us Earthlings, go Earth, 
Um, that new moon will be a bit above sun during the day or it'll be below sun. If it crosses right in front of sun, it will block it. It could partially block it, that's a partial eclipse, or it could fully block it. And if it fully blocks it, daytime turns to apparent night for two to four minutes-ish. Dogs react, frogs bark, uh, frogs, what do they do? <laughs> Ribbit, <laughs> croak, that's what it is, <laughs> and uh, crickets. I mean, it's, it's weird, birds come down, things happen, for like, what, what's going on? They're, affected by that light and then moon passes and then it's daytime again notice what phase that is it would have to be during the only way if sun's if moon's going to get in the way it's got to be during the new phase doesn't it because from earth we'd see the not lit the lit sides over here you aliens get to see that so i can write that over here new now when my moon passed into Earth's shadow, well, Earth's shadow's back here. So you gotta wait one week, first quarter, two weeks approximately, right? And now, usually, moon would be above Earth's shadow or below most months. But occasionally it goes through Earth's shadow. And you can see it over there, through Earth's shadow. I'm cheating a little bit. But notice that people having daytime, sun's out, they don't see it over here. It's, you gotta go around to nighttime. And at nighttime, you would see a full moon go through its shadow and turn orange like sunrise and sunset light. And it is connected. That's all I'm gonna say for right now. But I could have a solar eclipse followed about two weeks later by a lunar eclipse, or a lunar eclipse followed about two weeks later by a solar eclipse. Usually, this doesn't quite happen. Moon doesn't cast a shadow onto Earth. It can be above or below. And a full moon usually is above or below Earth's shadow. And that's all I'm gonna say about that. But notice, it's being into light daytime, nighttime, and what you can see. I can't see those stars right now. I can see those stars. Okay, we're getting ahead of ourselves. That's chapter two, three, and four, pulling it all together.